Okay, this is the My Days P100. And I'm mostly gonna go over some modifications. Um, this originally comes Yeah, I believe like this, and the wires are attached to here. This goes over the top, eight double A's, which indicates 12 volts. Also, there's a 12 volt uh, barrel jack down here. So you could power it externally. Um, I'm actually doing it an interesting way. I have a quick charge 3.0 trigger on this fast charge protocol board. Uh, it's like a PD and quick charge board. Uh, so this is triggering 12 volts to come out of here, to come out of the battery and then go into there. But I wanted something internal because when you seal this up, it's waterproof. So it's a matter of, do you wanna go with lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate? Lithium iron phosphate is safer, but you have to do 4S four cells in series. Whereas if you do lithium ion, there's no direct 12 volt. You have to do either 3S or 4S. 4S is a bit too high. 3S can be a bit too low towards the bottom. So where's that battery? So here I have some lithium iron phosphate cells. Um, these weren't ideal though, because they're only 1100 milliamp hours. Uh, they're power cells, apparently 30C, but they're not. I tested them. It would kind of not really fit in right there. It doesn't go down all the way. So uh, the screen sticks out a bit and I figured that might be an issue. I just could not get these, well, Maybe. Yeah, now the cable's sticking out, I don't think. So going 3S was easier. Um, and 3S of lithium iron phosphate would be like a max voltage of, what is that, 10.8? So that's definitely too low. Uh, 3S of lithium ion would be a max voltage of 12.6, a minimum voltage of, most people don't take it down below three volts a cell, but it can go lower. It'd be like nine volts. Let's say, let's not go lower than that. So you're only gonna get to use about half of this because you're only gonna go down to like 10 and a half before a lot of devices say, nope, that's not enough. That's not close enough to 12. So this pack isn't the one I'm using. Uh, this is actually for a, um, a drill because these are high discharge but this is you know shrink wrap and everything and it fits down there like a glove <clears throat> so here's the pack I am using uh, these are 10 amp cells so still relatively good discharge not that you need it but they're 3200 3300 milliamp hours they're Eve 33 V so I still need to shrink wrap this but I have um, Barley paper on it, also known as fish paper. This would be kind of your first step, especially if you're doing something like this where the nickel would overhang. You definitely want barley paper covering the cell right there. So if you're making these, barley paper, capped on tape, heat shrink. Um, the big stuff like this. So you can see I previously had um, like sticky foam tape down there, but I needed to yank this out and make this safer. But all I did was uh, unsolder the wires from the original battery connector, put an XT30 on, and I'll secure that back down there once I have shrink wrap on it. And it's just a simple plug and play. Uh, yeah, I'll do it right now just to show you it works.
and this lasts for a very, very, very long time. Um, dude, it was sitting outside for over a week and taking picture after picture because the PIR on here is really sensitive and it was taking pictures because the sun was reflecting off of a building and I had it in a bad spot. So it had 60 gigabytes worth of pictures on it, hundreds of them, and the battery still didn't go below 12 volts and I had it at starting at like 12.55. The only thing that was scary is being in Arizona, I was seeing logging in through the app while I was still inside, I was seeing that the temperature was like 50 degrees Celsius. That's, you don't want these to go over, 80 is the danger limit, 70 is really where you should for safety reasons not take them over when they're discharging. Um, and then just for the sake of them lasting long since heat is the biggest killer, 60 would be the highest number you'd want to see. If you're putting them in an environment that's above 60 all the time, they're going to die pretty quick. So let's turn this back off. So if we watch the meter here, See, the highest it gets is like an amp and a half. It usually sits around an amp. Or, I'm sorry, not an amp, a wa one watt. Not quite a watt. You see about 100 milliamps or 80 milliamps. You know, you don't see too much current. Uh, it's not a hydrating device at all. So if we were to hit menu and go, like, you don't see any major changes. Uh, so let's try start. I have this in a 30 second delay and then it takes pictures only. Now it, uh, the PIR sensors are on. Pay attention to the meter. It's like a watt. It does not use much energy at all. I gotta wait 30 seconds to do it again. So I am recording the amount of energy it's consuming over here. Or is it not running? Do I need to turn it back on? Oh, it hasn't been long enough. There it goes. Okay, it is recording. So I'll go up a little bit. So... So my meter can't even detect. It's not running the clock because there's so minuscule amount of current running through here that it's saying that there's nothing going through it. So the only time it's adding to the clock or adding to the amp hour figure is when I actually wait 30 seconds and get it to take another picture. You'll see it went a couple seconds. I mean, we were at 828, then we took a picture, and then we took another picture, 838, and that is, that is 8 milliamp hours, 8.38 milliamp hours at 12 volts. Keep in mind that's at 12 volts, not at the battery voltage of 3.7. Uh, watt hours is a much better number because that incorporates voltage. So these cells are what, probably like 8 watt hours a piece, maybe 9 maybe a little bit more, um, maybe, I'd have to double check, they're, they're pretty decent though, they're maybe 10, whatever, um, you know, we're at one-tenth of a watt hour, 
So there's three of them. And you just see how much energy did that use? You can't even add it up because it just is so little. Do I hit okay? Uh, hit start to get the screen back on. And now here it'll actually start counting because the screen's on. It actually does draw some current there, 800, sorry, 80 milliamps. And you know, we're still just nowhere at 106 milliwatt hours, 107. So, um, 18650s in a 3S fit in here well. Um, four of them don't really quite sit in deep enough. I think you might be able to close it, I'm not sure. I also have 26650s, but I don't see how these would fit well either. Well, you know, see it's too narrow up here. That's the highest you can go up. So 26650s I think would be a no-go. They're too wide. They're the same length though, they're 65 millimeters. Um, lithium ion 21700s. So if you have lithium iron phosphate 32700s fatter, yeah, those, you know, they fit. Only down here, though. Definitely not up here. Um, if you have batteries out of vapes, like uh, an Elf Bar, I recently made a fairly decent sized battery pack, and those are 16350s. So they're 35 millimeters in length. Yeah. So they would fit in here really easily. Um, but the ones out of here only have 650 milliamp hours or not, not a ton. Um, there were other vapes that I was using way back in the day, Max Flow Duos or something, and they had almost 1400 milliamp hour batteries. So they use those. I thought at first that this was gonna be a bit of an energy hog and I was gonna to have to use a 4S5P pack and have it external and it was connected to this and then running the power like that. It didn't even touch anything out of this. I barely noticed the voltage drop. So let's just go through the menu real quick. Wi-Fi, the mode you are in, um, Motion detector, time lapse. I don't really know what. Oh, time lapse. It just must be every minute or whatever you set. It takes a picture. Um, menu. Photo or video, or you can do both. Um, I just have it set to photo. The video, you know, doesn't draw a ton of energy either. Um, I had the same 3S lithium ion pack in there. Never really went down. I did check it every few days though, but it never really went down that much. Photo quality, I leave it on 16 megapixels. I find that to be good enough. Photo burst, you can have it take multiple pictures. I don't know what the time gap is between them, but I found that to just clog up the SD card. Video quality, um, 1080 is good enough for I think most people. 1296 isn't much better. Uh, you're not getting 4K out of here, it doesn't matter. Uh, video length, because we don't have video selected, but you got the difference between daytime and night, and let's see how high you can go. So the highest was five minutes, the lowest was three, no, oh, three seconds. And you can do the same for the nighttime. Uh, you can turn on and off the video sound. 
it does seem to work all right. Uh, the video format that you want, .mlv or mp4, I find mp4 is probably what most people are gonna want. Detection delay, that's how, what I was showing you earlier. I have to wait 30 seconds between each picture. Um, this is a good feature. It's also the amount of time you have when you first set it up and close it and go to put it in its spot until it's going to start snapping pictures of you setting it up. You know, I would maybe drop this down to 10. Yeah, it's going to get some pictures of you setting it up, but in case something happens when it first starts taking a picture, if something changes in that scene in the next 10 seconds, you probably want to grab it again. Totally depends on your use case. Um, I thought medium was good. It turns out my location was bad. Uh, you don't want the sun, the angle of the sun and shadows and stuff are gonna set this off. So medium should work okay. If it is still giving you a lot of false positives, it's because you have it in a bad spot, most likely. Side motion sensors, I didn't really look into that too much. I only care about head-on. Motion test. Uh, that must be a test feature. Yeah, I don't care about that. Time-lapse interval, that's if you have time-lapse set up instead of motion detect. Time zone, uh, it is helpful to have the proper date and time set up on here, so that way when your pictures are stamped, you can know exactly when it was. You can set the date format, the time format. Uh, if you have multiple, you can change the camera name. Info strip. I'm guessing this is uh, making sure that your photos are dated and time stamped and all that. Probably, I don't know. Loop recording, I don't know. I, oh, you can set up operation hours. Nice. I had never done that yet because I have it running 24-7. Uh, you can set a password so that no one can connect to this just by downloading the app. Maybe that's a good idea. Decent number of language options there. What is that, like seven of them? Two, four, six, seven, yeah. English, French, uh, German, Spanish, I'm guessing Japanese, Italian, Portuguese, uh, Korean? One of these is Korean maybe, or? And one of them maybe Mandarin? I, yeah, I'm not that up to date on languages, sorry. Uh, format SD card. This is very helpful when you have an SD card just full of junk and you know you don't want anything on there. Format it for me, baby. And it wipes it clean for you. And you can reset all the factory stuff on here. Check the version that you have. Um, they do include a cable that I guess is for... Are there firmware updates? Yeah, it comes with a um, mini USB. That's not a micro, that's a mini. Contact us, oh, nice. In case you can't look that up on your own. Um, so this is on sale right now for 80 bucks. It's the Wi-Fi model. Um, I don't think there's a non-Wi-Fi model. 
There is one that has 4G cell service, which of course would probably entail you then spending a lot of money on cell service. It has a 50% off coupon, so it is actually cheaper than this. Interesting. We also have an S900, list price 220. It's on sale for 75. Uh, I think these are all Prime member, yeah. Um, S950, that's a 4G one, that's 80 bucks. Their P60, which looks fairly similar to this one, might just be missing some options here or there. It's 50 bucks. Uh, their S3 Pro, I don't see how that one's that much better than this, or might not be as good. It's 60 bucks with 20% off. So that'd be 48 plus tax. And then there's what look like some knockoffs, or maybe this is the knockoff. Um, the Vicuri, Vicuri, 70 bucks. Vupeak, uh, 130 with a $35 coupon, but it has a solar panel on top. Really not necessary, because like I showed you, even double a batteries alkalines would probably do fine in here i don't know if nickel metal hydride would do well um, because their voltage is a tad bit lower that might be an issue because they're a nominal 1.2 instead of 1.5 um so if you put eight of them in you'd just be a little short of 12 volts and then as they discharged you might run into issues but maybe you could build your own custom pack a yeah, 10 cells in series? I don't know. Uh, Stealth Cam Fusion, 75 bucks. There's a $40 My Days P60. This must not have Wi-Fi. Yeah, because there's no antenna. Um, so yeah, this thing looks reasonably priced. Maybe, no, it's it's very reasonably priced. I think it might even be priced a tad bit better with some of these discounts they have. So, let me grab my phone. Oh, I have my phone right here recording. Let me grab my other phone. My track phone. show you how the app works. Okay, there's the app. Up at the top here, I, I guess when you get a new one, dang it. Um, the setup is fairly easy overall. It does take a couple steps for you to connect, which is kind of annoying, but... So first you're gonna hit connect. Connect through Bluetooth. Because you have to set this up to be part of your Wi-Fi network, and it first connects through Bluetooth, and then it does through Wi-Fi. Join because now you're on its Wi-Fi network. And I think this is where it's gonna ask me for a password because I've never used this part yet. Okay, and start. And if we go to camera, took a minute. It's getting to the bottom of my iMac. So I can take pictures 
or I could turn it to video and say start recording, or I could just set this up somewhere and watch. Go to stats and see temperature, uh, how full the SD card is, how the battery's doing. Um, so this says 96% because it's putting out 11.93. Uh, running like this is about one and a half watts or so. Let me go and change it to this. Does that lower it? Nah. Actually, running it like this is probably the heaviest load you put on it. Okay, so you can see number of photos, number of videos. Here's a bunch of settings that you don't have to go through then on here and do it physically. You can just do it all on here. Oh, sorry, let me get that back in the frame. And then the gallery. Those were all the old photos, the negatives it took, or the false positives, sorry. So if I go to camera and snap a picture, and it just showed up. Temp, date and time. You know, it takes you about an hour maybe to learn how to use this thing at most. Uh, read the manual, it's good manual. There's not a ton of info online. But yeah, um, you can just run it with alkaline double A's if you wanted to. But I think if you're into little battery packs or anything and you actually know what you're doing, building a 3S 18650 out of um, some high capacity cells, LG MJ1, EVE 33V, uh, you know, any of the 3,000 milliamp hour plus is going to give you, who knows, a month plus of runtime, unless you're constantly in on it like this. Um, so let me disconnect. Hit disconnect. So it says it's still active. It looks like I'm disconnected. It is running a little bit more than it was before. Um, do I have to hit start? See, I want to say that once you log off from your phone, it puts it back into motion detection mode. But it doesn't look like it was doing that there. Maybe I screwed up. So, yeah, there's everything I know about that. Any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll answer whatever I can. Um, you need custom battery packs, let me know.